Back in June of 2021, Elon Musk unveiled the Model S Plaid, which was meant to be the next level upgrade over Tesla's Model S, arguably one of the most influential electric vehicles of our time. This was nine years after Tesla made first deliveries of the original Model S back in 2012. However, after the release of the Model 3 and the Model Y and their respective success, it was unclear as to whether or not Tesla would continue to make the Model S and X. At one point, it almost seemed like Elon Musk was going to give up on these vehicles since the higher-end Models 3 and Y were beginning to cannibalize the brands. However, Tesla decided to go ahead with the upgrade to Plaid to show hands down that this was the way to go. Electric cars can be the most sustainable, the safest, and the fastest cars around. These new Plaid vehicles have also been able to differentiate themselves with some insane specs. The Model S has over 400 miles of range, 2 seconds 0 to 60 acceleration, and power that beats any supercar on the market, and some insane software that continues to get better over time through over-the-air software updates. During the Plaid Model S delivery event, Elon Musk has even called it Limit of Physics Engineering. Now, car specialist Sandy Monroe was able to raise money through selling merch to his incredible audience in order to purchase a Model S Plaid and to begin tearing it apart to try and discover its incredible new secrets. He called it a design symphony and has mainly good things to say about the vehicle as a whole, as well as given some suggestions to Tesla based on his own experience in the industry. For instance, just a week ago, Sandy Monroe and his team took apart the Plaid doors and they were disappointed to find that the design was that of what Sandy and the industry calls stick-build doors as opposed to a modular door such as what's found in the Model Y. This means that the operators assembling the Model S doors will have a much more difficult time putting them together compared to the Y doors. Now, this has a minimal effect on the end consumer who doesn't know or care about the type of door that they have, but it means that Tesla is spending more time and money on building Model S doors. Now, it doesn't seem to be the case that Tesla doesn't know how to make a good modular door because they've done it for the Model Y. It appears that they've made the decision, at least for the time being, to stick with the types of doors that were already being built for the Model S and not change them. Whether the reason was for cost savings of redoing their line or the extra time it would take to replace the line and slow down first deliveries or another reason. Model S is a much lower volume vehicle than the Model Y, so perhaps Tesla figured it would be better to make this trade-off for now, but that said, Tesla could be planning to upgrade their factory in the future, or if they haven't already, to use the Model Y modular doors instead. As a matter of fact, Elon Musk has told Sandy Monroe in the past one-on-one -on -one interview that he had with him that it's hard to change the wheels on the bus when it's going at 80 miles an hour down the highway. And so it's very likely that Tesla will improve their design over time. And we know that Sandy Monroe has received one of the earlier versions of the Model S Plaid. By the way, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years, and it's all freely available. Now, as previously mentioned, the Model S has some of the best performance in the world. During the Plaid unveil, Elon Musk illustrated this difference by showing the vehicle's power curve, which maintains 1,000 plus horsepower all the way to 200 miles per hour. This is unlike even previous versions of the Model S, which even those vehicles have some of the best specs of any car, and yet the Plaid blows them out of the water. Sandy Monroe starts off by examining the vehicle's inverter and putting the inverter from the Model S into the Model 3 and the Model Y motor castings, demonstrating that it fits in all three, making it backwards and forwards compatible. That means that this new inverter, once ramped up in production, can go into Model Ys or 3s, but at the same time, if there's a parts shortage, they can put the older inverter into the Model S and X if needed. This reusability is also important, given that the inverter is a complex device inverting DC to AC, it's not something that Tesla wants to redesign slightly for every vehicle in terms of size and shape. Now that said, Sandy Monroe compares the one found in the Model S to the one found from the Model Y that he tore down, they're the same size, but there are slight changes on the board itself, but Tesla is able to upgrade the board over time 
and still fit it into any car. Now the Model S Plaid has three motors, one in the front and two in the rear. That means there's no rear differential in the Model S Plaid since there's two independent motors each controlling one of the wheels. Tesla can take advantage of torque vectoring and for more information on this I've put a link in the description to a video that I've previously made discussing this. Next, Sandy Monroe and his team dig deeper into the internals of the Plaid motor. The stator, which is the outer stationary part of the motor, he says is the same as in the Model Y. This would also be true for the Model 3, but Sandy keeps referencing the Model Y since that's the most recent vehicle he tore down and it's likely that Tesla has moved its upgrades throughout its various production lines. Now what really surprised Sandy is the rotor, the part that spins. It's encased in carbon fiber windings and while Elon Musk has said this before, now we're getting Sandy's review comments about it. He says it's something he's never seen before and it's quite amazing. And one advantage of using carbon fiber is that it's lightweight, but there's more to it than that. When they cut inside and looked at the electric motor, he says that it's revolutionary. They pulled the carbon fiber off and just about peed our pants. Those are Sandy Monroe's words. He places magnetic field viewing paper, which is a film that has little metal flakes inside that line up with the magnetic field to help visualize it. And what he notices is that the field lines aren't skewed, which he says is normally done to prevent pulsing, but in this case they're completely in line. Sandy Monroe describes this as it's doing something magic. He's joking here because he's impressed and astounded at how they're able to do that and still get no pulsing, which he says he didn't detect at all when he drove the car. I assume by pulsing he means like a glitching or a jumping sort of feeling from the motor. He's actually not entirely sure how they achieve this. He's so impressed that he says it's because Tesla's invented new physics or something. Now upon looking at this, Sandy suggests that instead of using the carbon fiber winding, which he believes may be slower to produce since you have to wait for each motor to be wound, he would instead use a knitted carbon fiber weave and slide it on top of the motor. However, during the Plaid unveil, Elon Musk stated that Tesla had to invent the machine that was doing this winding since it didn't exist and its purpose was to create very high tension to basically hold the rotor together from exploding or coming apart at extremely high RPM or high speeds. But it sounds like with the idea of sliding on a knitted weave that you may not get the same sort of tightness that Elon Musk was previously alluding to. Next, Sandy looks at the laminates themselves, which strangely aren't circular on their own and have separate pieces to them. In this case, the magnets are in the form of long bars that sit on these outer rounded poles which complete the circular portion when connected to the laminate. It's interesting that they're not touching the laminates on the edges, there's actually a gap in between. This has allowed Tesla to get much more power and torque and Sandy isn't entirely sure how exactly they get these poles to work the way they do. The magnets themselves are more powerful than even Tesla's Model Y, about 35% stronger on average according to the data collected by Monroe. Tesla actually has a patent on this entire structure that was published in November 2021 where they talk about wrapping the rotor with a wound carbon fiber sleeve where the magnets are not fully enclosed by the rotor. So there's gaps in between the laminates and the magnets and everything is literally held together with the carbon fiber wrapping. Elon Musk even alluded to this during the Plaid unveil. In the patent, they say, the sleeved motor can also produce more power than a conventional motor at the same speeds. Higher fundamental flax to slot harmonic ratios lead to greater motor efficiency at high speeds at both low and high torque. Further, the carbon wrapped motor design can reduce or eliminate leakages which allows for better utilization of an inverter current and leads to a peak power increase of up to 25% or more. At high speeds, the sleeved motor can generate more power as compared to a conventional motor without increasing the usage of permanent magnets. So again, the carbon fiber which is 5 times stronger than steel isn't just for light weight but it's necessary for holding the motor together and enabling this new insane design. It's funny because the CEO of Lucid Motors, Peter Rawlinson, who was once the chief engineer at Tesla, was on Jay Leno's garage and Jay asked him about Tesla's carbon fiber rotors, calling it a breakthrough. However, Rawlinson says that the carbon fiber rotors are used often in racing and Lucid has been able to make their vehicles without the use of carbon fiber, cutting down on cost. 
Not exactly what you want to hear from a luxury vehicle maker, but he completely downplays the carbon fiber rotors, as he should since he's a competitor and doesn't have this technology. But he's not correct when he says that it's used often in the racing industry. No one has this. Tesla has invented something completely new here that's totally unmatched and this is why competitors need to pretend that it's really nothing at all. But car expert Sandy Monroe, who's looked at hundreds of different motors, is calling it revolutionary. Now while Tesla has patented the design of the motor, there's still a lot of secret sauce that goes into this because it doesn't seem like they've disclosed anything about the factory process to create it. For example, how to build the machine that wraps the carbon fiber winding, which is not something that you can just buy at the store. Anyone trying to copy Tesla would have to create all the machinery or reinvent it themselves, and they're still busy trying to catch up to Tesla's old motor versions, which continue to be much more efficient than anything that any competition has to offer. In terms of the Plaid motor, Sandy Monroe states that everything that you ever saw about how to manufacture an electric motor has been changed. That's a powerful statement. He also believes that this is the motor they'll be putting on the Cybertruck. I think we'll for sure see this on the Plaid version of the Cybertruck without a doubt, but it will be interesting to see if Tesla can scale this technology at a low cost to other vehicles in their lineup as well, such as other versions of the Cybertruck or in the Tesla Semi to give it some insane power and efficiency. So do you think that Tesla has something truly revolutionary here with their limit of physics engineering? And do you think Tesla will scale these new motors to other non-plaid vehicles in their lineup? Be sure to check out my last video on David Einhorn's latest short position on Tesla. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.